since they both have their coffee. That was for these questions that I'm about to ask them. <laughs> right. Number one, you have to take the any lulls that you get in your business. Like for us, April to for us, there's never really a lull. It's just a different type of busyness. Um, but whenever you, we don't have April, May, June, we don't have a ton of store traffic. We have to use that time wisely to make sure that those processes that we were talking about are as fine tuned as possible. Um, using using your time to make sure that all your proverbial ducks are in a row, whether it's ordering, whether it's creating space, whether it's for us getting rid of scooters that have been sitting here way too long that need to just be delivered back to their owner so we have the space to put new inventory so we can sell it. Um, but using any bit of dead time that you might have to better prepare yourself for when that busy season hits will let you you know, get to that point and hit the ground running rather than having to invent the wheel on the fly whenever, whenever your bulk volume time hits. Do you have anything on that one? Um. I think really understanding the processes that you already have in place and being able to kind of improve them every single year, which I think is something that we do every August, I feel like. Um, we always have meetings to go back and revisit, okay, how did we do this last year? What was not efficient about that? What can we do this year that's different so that it's easier on us, easier on customers? Kind of taking a bulk of <laughs> the work and kind of splitting it up in a way that everybody can manage, especially during insanity like the last two weeks. Yeah, you definitely don't <laughs> want to underestimate the value of training, whether it's a temp help or like us, we have a lot of turnover because of the, the college students that graduate and come back and we replace them. Um, you got to give them time to get trained so they can have the tools necessary to succeed. Uh, so you don't want to underestimate or undervalue giving them the time to get acclimated and learn those processes. That way they're not learning something new on the fly whenever the busiest time of the year hits. Yeah. Also flow charts are... Flow charts. So Lee, Lee Clark, our Chief of Wisdom here at New Scooter Celeste has many, many uh, one-line sayings. And one of my favorite that stuck with me over the years is uh, if you don't have a backup plan, you don't have a plan. And and if you, you're blessed with the time ahead of your busy season to be able to you know, kind of engage and prepare, then you need to kind of put yourself through the mental hurdles of what could go wrong. Uh, you know, if this happens, then what? And just kind of go ahead and start thinking about that now. That way, in the event that it does happen, you've got something in mind of how you're going to act. Because a lot of times, you have to make those decisions on the fly. So definitely using your time where maybe you're not so busy to prepare uh, to come up with those plan B, C, D, just, you know, worst case scenarios, if this happens, then what, then, then I think that that's helpful. Yeah, um, I'm gonna go a different direction than that and say finding tools and resources that you can use during those times. I think Slack and Trello were two of the best things that we've done just to keep information handy to everyone. Um, all at once. So like literally everyone has access to all of the scooter information. Um, we can mess like basically instant message anyone on the team and get in touch with them. Um, and we can send out a whole message to the entire team and instead of asking people, hey did you check your email? Did you get that email I sent you about this one thing? Like no, it's just on Slack and it goes straight to everyone's phones. Um, but really finding tools like that that you can use that work for your business. Technology is huge. So for us, I mean, our primary demographic from our customer standpoint is 18 to 22 year old, 18 to 22 year olds or University of Florida students. Uh, one thing that's been uh, evident over the years is you have to communicate with your customers the way they want to communicate. If I have a service customer here right now and I call them for their repair, they're probably not going to answer. They probably don't have a voicemail set up. Uh, so there's. You, you, if, if that's the only way that you're going to communicate them, or communicate with them, your service department's going to halt to a standstill, right? So we use text message, obviously, email, Snapchat, in any way that you can get a hold of your customers. Um, I mean, you use technology to your benefit. 
Um, I think one of the cooler things that we've done is, is use Snapchat as a customer service tool. If somebody's come out to their scooter and it's broken down or making a, a weird noise or anything like that, they can actually snap Colin or Brad and show them what it's doing. And a lot of times it's something that they can troubleshoot them real quick over the phone or over Snapchat and, and get them to not even have to bring it in because it's something obvious, right? Uh, so being innovative with the way you use technology and especially social media I think is, is something that you can use as your advantage uh, to streamline communication and processes and stuff like that. I think the biggest change for me this year was all last classes actually. Yeah. That was a giant project I was working on like before I left to go on the trail actually. Um, and Colin basically gave us a goal of having customers. I think his original estimate was in and out in 15 minutes and then somehow it whittled down to five minutes. A true call it form. <laughs> like, um, but that was kind of something I feel like the end of last year he kind of challenged us with and we did it. And while there were a little bit of hiccups and there are some frustrating parts about it, I think the cool... <laughs> 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 it was a valiant effort to not interrupt, or, but I couldn't help it. She's doing the army crawl on her own. <laughs> Right. <laughs> uh, but, but the whole aspect has really kind of changed the game as far as being able to have customers fill out information, give us everything we need to prepare paperwork, get their scooter ready, all those kinds of things before they're ever even set foot in the store. Um, so that they literally come in, it's sign and drive was the idea. It's like uh, Disney Fast Pass for right. Scooter Shillette. <laughs> That's another thing about processes. You you take this time of year, and as soon as we start winding down a little bit, the first thing we're going to do is have a debrief. Like what went what went well, what needs some more fine tuning, and while everything's fresh in our minds, that's when you start making the tweaks necessary uh, to put in place for the next busy season. Uh, because if you wait eight months and before you start thinking about it again, you're not going to really remember what went well, what what could have been better. So. Once we get to probably the first week of September, we'll start looking back and, and tweaking things like the Hall Ass Pass and seeing you know, how we can make it better. If we were at 10 minutes, how we can get it down to five. Um, and that's what this team's really good at. That's what especially the, the process people, the leadership is good at, is, is not being content with things just flying by. It's like, no, we need to make this better. We have high demands for how good something should be, how fast something should be. Um, so. I definitely think that looking back and, and tweaking those processes and not getting like complacent on them is always good. Well, first, I appreciate that because that's definitely the type of leader I want to be or I strive to be is definitely a servant leader, leader and a lead by example kind of person. Um, one thing that always sticks in my mind is a picture I saw years ago and it was the difference between a boss and a leader and a boss is the one that's shouting at the people, you know, telling them to do something and the leader is the one dragging, dragging the load with them. Um, and that's who I strive to be. Um, especially, I mean, you manage, managing people is a difficult thing to do if you let it be. I, I think that the people that are most successful at it understand that people are very different and you have to understand that there is no one size fits all technique to getting the best out of people. You gotta, you gotta learn your employees, learn your team members, and know what strings to pull, how they receive feedback, how to motivate them on an individual level in order to get the most out of everybody. Um, so a lot of, a lot of it that, that works for our team is just being on the front lines with them, showing them that just because you're a leader in this organization doesn't mean that you know, there's work here that's, that's below you or anything like that. Uh, being on the front lines with them, being empathetic, telling them that you've been there and sharing stories with, you know, difficulties that you've had that you can share with them. Anything like that to kind of, you know, I don't want to say humanize the position differences, but like let them know that you do understand what they're going through. Um, I think goes a long way in making sure that, that everybody's on the same page. All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed today's vlog, uh, especially the segment that we talked about processes and getting ready, preparation for busy seasons, and stuff like that in business. I'll tell you that regardless of whether you're a business owner or a student or anything, giving yourself time to plan things out and focus on processes is gonna save you time, save you frustration, save you stress and hassle down the road. So take the time to map things out, work forward through things in your head to try to come up with those processes that make sense for whatever you're doing and you'll find yourself ahead of the game and much more stress-free moving on but yeah so i hope you guys enjoyed the vlog busy season is in full force and we'll catch you next time